Sunday at 4 on Channel 2. Special investigative reports on Channel 2 News. In the news tonight, President Clinton keeps a promise and changes federal rules on abortion. The New York Post could be forced to fold as soon as tomorrow. And a racist fraternity incident rocks a New Jersey college campus. This is Channel 2 News at 11. Good evening. At the end of what has been a stormy second full day in office for President Bill Clinton. The new president had to face another confrontation with Iraq, the political storm over his nominee for Attorney General Zoe Baird, and the emotional issue of abortion. Our coverage begins tonight with the president reversing federal rules on abortion on this important anniversary. Channel 2's Brian Williams reports from Washington. And now a man has taken the White House who has promised to further the shedding of innocent blood. The day started with the head of the anti-abortion group Operation Rescue, Randall Terry, praying outside the White House gate. He was praying for Bill Clinton, but more than that, for nothing short of a political miracle. There's a pro-choice administration in town after 12 years of Reagan-Bush rule and court appointments that went their way. The anti-abortion protesters came to Washington from all 50 states. Many with their families, they came by the tens of thousands. They heard speakers who told them their movement must keep the faith during the next four years. In the crowd, everyone brought to the gathering their own reasons for opposing legalized abortion. I lost two children through abortion. And uh, on this January 22nd, I'm reminded every time that if things were different, I might have two more children, and that's what really hurts. Later, the long march to the Supreme Court, the focal point of today's events, as it was in this building 20 years ago that the controversial decision Roe versus Wade was handed down. Though the pro-choice side scheduled only evening events and thus weren't heard from amid the chants of the anti-abortion crusade today, President Clinton was in effect doing some of their work for them. Today, he signed executive orders designed to reverse attempts by the High Court and Congress to restrict abortion and medical research. The president ordered an end to the ban on abortion counseling at clinics that receive federal funds, the so-called gag rule, an end to the ban on financing fetal tissue research, and an end to the ban on testing and possibly importing the so-called French abortion pill known as RU486. Our vision should be of an America where abortion is safe and legal, but rare. Further bolstering the hopes of those on the pro-choice side is the prospect, some say the virtual guarantee, that President Clinton will get to fill one, maybe more, seats on the Supreme Court with like-minded justices, possibly reversing a conservative trend over 12 years of Reagan-Bush. In Washington, Brian Williams, Channel 2 News. Lifting the abortion gag rule has special meaning tonight at a clinic in the South Bronx. The Planned Parenthood Clinic on East 149th Street is where Battle of the Gag Rule began. The clinic counsels 8,000 women every year and receives half a million dollars a year in federal funds. It lost those funds when it refused to be gagged, but that changed today with the stroke of President Clinton's pen. Politics is going to be out of the dispensing of health care advice. Doctors are going to be free to talk to their patients. Patients are going to get the straight dope. Tonight, clinic officials say they realize the change in the law may also bring more demonstrators to their doorstep. And even before President Clinton took on the abortion issue today, he faced the withdrawal of Zoe Baird as his nominee to be Attorney General. Repeat after me. President Clinton began his second full day in office in the shadow of his first major defeat. He watched the members of his new cabinet being sworn in this morning without one prominent nominee. Zoe Baird, Mr. Clinton's pick for attorney general, withdrew her name early this morning after hearings that hammered away at her admission that she employed two illegal aliens as babysitter and paid no taxes for them. There are tens of thousands, millions of Americans out there who have trouble taking care of their children with one fiftieth the income that you and your husband have. Throughout the two days of hearings before the Senate Judiciary Committee, Baird repeatedly said what she did was wrong, that she made a mistake, and she insisted it would not interfere with her job. But as negative public opinion filled the Washington switchboards, opposition in the Senate began to build from both Republicans and Democrats. Then, at about 1 o'clock this morning, Baird faxed a letter to President Clinton pulling her name from nomination. 
I am surprised at the extent of the public reaction, but face reality that this situation affects my ability to achieve the goals we both have for the Department of Justice. As he convened his first cabinet meeting this morning, President Clinton said he was sad about Baird's withdrawal. I still have a very high regard for her. She is an extraordinary person. She and I feel very badly about it, but I'm responsible for it, and I'm going to start this afternoon uh, looking for an attorney general. Working mothers we spoke to today had differing views about Baird. I'm very ambivalent about it. I don't think somebody in such a high place should break the law. And yet, as a working mother, I feel sympathy. There were issues about her upholding the law and doing what she should have done. And whether we choose to pay taxes or not, I think we all know what we're supposed to be doing. Zoe Baird will return to the Aetna Life Insurance Company and her job that pays $500,000 a year. At the same time, immigration officials are investigating whether the illegal aliens she employed should be deported back to Peru. Jim? And this second full day in Mr. Clinton's presidency brought a second confrontation with Iraq. The Pentagon says this morning Iraqi radar locked on two United States warplanes patrolling Iraq's northern no-fly zone. One plane fired two missiles at the radar site, but apparently missed. Today, Iraq showed off the site of a similar incident yesterday in the northern no-fly zone. There were remains of various missile and bomb debris fired after Iraqi radar locked onto an Allied reconnaissance plane. The Pentagon says it doesn't know if Saddam Hussein has ended his ceasefire, but officials say President Clinton is ready for any confrontation. The president has continued, is prepared to hold firm with Iraq. If they fail, to, they must comply with all the UN resolutions. And if they take hostile action against our pilots who are monitoring the no-fly zone, we will respond. Today, another 19 United Nations weapons inspectors arrived in Baghdad. They'll begin searching for chemical and other Iraqi weapons tomorrow. Back here at home, trouble tonight at the New York Post. The paper, founded by Alexander Hamilton, could be forced out of business as soon as tomorrow. Channel 2's Lisa Castleman has the latest live at Post headquarters in Lower Manhattan. Lisa? Michelle, a lot of people here are shaking their heads tonight. A few more of them are optimistic, but the paper needs a lot of money to keep publishing. The owner, Peter Calico, had gone to his bank recently, the Bankers Trust, to ask them to extend another line of credit. The answer was no, unless, of course, they said, if you can make some big changes here and make them fast. Tonight, it's just a waiting game. The New York Post's more than 700 employees can't even be sure if the paper will survive the weekend. With the bankers pulling the plug on its line of credit, the New York Post is asking its employees and management to take 20% pay cuts until a deal with a new buyer can be worked out. All of the uh, union presidents and the uh, chair people that were there from the various units are recommending this. And this financial mess has been a headache for owner Peter Calico, who already went into personal bankruptcy two years ago. Tonight, he's holding out hope that the paper can be saved. Uh, we were, we were um, in meetings with them this week, and we feel that if we can show them the paper will be operating on a, a no-loss basis over the next four weeks to enable us to conclude a deal with a buyer, that they'll be uh, cooperative to us. It was back in August of 1990 that the Post suffered a near-death experience, but workers agreed then to a 20% pay cut and a four-day work week. Will they take the same cut again? The, the mood upstairs is, is, is fear, the fear of not having a job, the fear of not being able to make a mortgage payment or buy food, that Monday we may be out of work. This is very close. We've never come this close before. It's like at a, a blood bank. you got to give once in a while, so we give. It's for our benefit. That the Post's new troubles come just a couple of weeks after Mort Zuckerman purchased the Daily News may be no coincidence. With four local newspapers on New York stands every day, competition is tough. Investors may have seen the Daily News' survival as a threat to the Post. So now the nation's oldest daily newspaper, founded by Alexander Hamilton in 1801, is fighting an untimely death, unsure how much time, if any, is left. There's a bottle of Excedrin on your desk before. How much of that are you? It's only the third one today, you know. Calico says he'd raise the price of the paper from 40 to 50 cents if it survives. They're going to have meetings here over the weekend. The union members are expected to vote on the pay cut deal sometime on Sunday. If they vote for it, and only if the bank accepts that deal, will there be a paper on Monday? Reporting live from New York Post headquarters, I'm Lisa Castleman. Now back to the studio. Lisa, is the feeling that the union will accept this offer? A lot of them are saying, what can I do if I vote yeah. against it? I'm uh, voting against everybody's right. job, so maybe they will. Lisa, thank you. After serving 12 years in prison for murdering diet doctor Herman Tarnauer, 
Gene Harris is free tonight on parole. Harris was released just before 7.30 this evening from the Westchester County Medical Center. She underwent open heart surgery there a month ago on the same day the Governor Cuomo granted her clemency. Her attorney said that for now, the 69-year-old Miss Harris would stay with friends in New York to continue her medical care. College fun turns deadly serious. Coming up next, how a fraternity pledge night ended in a horrible racial incident. Plus, concern that new plans to help the mentally ill homeless could backfire. And later, singer Eric Clapton's message to parents as he tries to save other children from his own son's fate. And Storm Field with our weekend forecast. Ah, Jim, is it really January? It's so mild outside, and that mild weather looks like it's staying with us. All the details when we come back. Channel 2 News at 11, sponsored by Citibank. <laughs> struggles for respect as a doctor while seeking the courage to raise the family she inherits. Saturdays on CBS, the sweeping saga of a beautiful adventurer in an untamed land. Jane Seymour is Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. Hey, nice Camry, don't you love it? Are you kidding? I got a great deal. I'm so excited. It's Toyota's event of the new year and the deals on Camry are something to get excited about right now you can drive a new Camry for less than you thought now that's exciting and I think I like it. there's never been a better time to get excited so hurry to your Toyota dealer now during the first big sales event of the new year tonight authorities at a small New Jersey college are investigating what appears to be a racist incident on a fraternity pledge night it happened earlier this month, but details are now just coming out. New Jersey correspondent Ren Scott reports from Ryder College in Lawrenceville. To the all-white membership of the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity at Ryder College, it was a hazing night with a theme. But to the roughly 180 black students on this liberal arts campus of 3,000, it was racist, demeaning, and it was wrong. Um, I, I just think it's um, disgusting. If um, nothing's done, it's just going to simplify and um, racism is going to continue to abound. You know? What happened here back on January 4th is something that this fraternity secretly but boldly called nigger night. During the event, the pledges were allegedly required to wear black outfits of the 1930s, speak in a step and fetch it dialogue, wear Malcolm X baseball caps, and actually get down on their hands and knees and scrub the floors of this fraternity. Four days later, several white students reported the incident to the college administration. And today, students and administrators of all races met to hear the college president speak out against the alleged event. Let me assure you that if the incidents occurred that we believe occurred, um, I consider them deplorable, um, substantially below anything that this college community should tolerate. Were you offended? Were you hurt? Were you angry? Well, let me just say, for the most part, I wasn't surprised. Um, what it does internally is it helps to break down one self-esteem, but if you are strong enough, you will come back. I'm involved in student government, and I work a lot with the clubs, and until there's unity among all the clubs and all the people here, um, the problems are gonna continue. The national chapter of Phi Kappa Psi has promised a full investigation, along with the main investigation by the college administration. If found guilty, the instigator of the incident could be suspended for one year, and the Ryder chapter of Phi Kappa Psi closed for good. I think racism's um, a part of this country, you know, and um, I don't know, it's really up to the uh, person himself to decide, hey, I'm not going to be a racist person. At Ryder College, I'm Ren Scott, Channel 2 News. In Queens tonight, a 37-year-old man is charged with the murders of his wife and two young daughters. The three victims were found in their Elmhurst home early this morning with their throats slashed. The suspect reportedly said voices told him his wife and children would be tortured if he didn't kill them before the Chinese New Year. 
Tonight, a debate is heating up over whether to force mentally ill homeless people off the streets and into institutions. As we reported last night, the Cuomo administration has ordered mental health experts into homeless shelters to identify those with psychiatric problems. This comes after 80-year-old Dow Johnson was allegedly beaten to death by a mentally ill homeless man. Experts say the real challenge will be getting the homeless to stay inside the institution. Patients who are in the homeless program, in the hospital, are used to living on the street. And it's part of their, their nature to, to want to, uh, to go back to the street. So that it, it's a constant effort of, of patients who, who, who get admitted to the hospital uh, were not prisons. It is estimated that 30% of the city's homeless suffer some kind of mental disorder. Coming up next, will our weekend weather stay mild? Storm Field has the forecast. He cried tears in heaven when his own son died. Now Eric Clapton is trying to save other children from the same fate. If I saw you in heaven. One day, Jeff sat down to figure out how much we'll have for retirement. How's it going, Einstein? That's very funny. Take a look at this. I thought we were doing a pretty good job. At this rate, we'll Are never retire. This is all we're Over two million Americans save for their retirement with Fidelity Investments, with choices like Asset Manager, a fund that gradually adjusts its portfolio to take advantage of changing market conditions. For this free retirement planning guide, plus everything you need to start, call 1-800-647-8484. Now this eight-piece gift is yours with any Estee Lauder purchase of $15 or more. Through February 6th at Lord & Taylor. Start your day with a bigger, brighter choice of music. Light FM. Turn it on. The message is clear. A bigger, brighter choice of music. Light FM. Turn it on. Everyone has grown up with something from Hasbro, the world's largest toy company. And who has Hasbro grown up with? The American Stock Exchange. The business behind the business. You've been hearing a lot of noise about long distance. And while no one takes you to more places than AT&T, did you know this? Place for place, Europe, Asia, South America, everywhere, we give you competitive prices. In fact, the difference between AT&T and other major long-distance companies is no more than a penny. So now that price isn't the real issue, what should you think about? Remember service? Bye. Quality? Look at the big picture. Tonight, Mayor Dinkins has once again stepped into the controversy over this year's St. Patrick's Day Parade. He said whoever winds up with the permit to organize the parade will have to allow a homosexual group to march. The mayor said a city human rights commission ruling forbids excluding the gay group. Right now, the ancient order of Hibernians is trying to win the parade permit back from a newly formed committee which promised to let the gay group march. All right, to the weather now. The weekend is here, thank goodness, right? And rain, I suppose. Yeah, but... <laughs> Well, you're such a harbinger yeah. of good thoughts, Jim. Yeah. Let, let's be bright. Let's be cheerful. Well, let's I'm a try realist. To think positive stuff. Jim's a realist. Uh. <laughs> All right. Well, sure, there'll be some rain just for Jim. I wasn't going to keep it out of the forecast, but he's expecting it, and that's the way it is. Sorry. 44 degrees outside right now. Very mild out for this time of year. Humidity 62%. Winds from the west southwest at about nine miles an hour. Overnight tonight, don't expect the temperatures to drop very much. We'll be down around 36 here in Midtown, which is only about a degree below the normal high for this time of year. And throughout the surrounding areas, not bad at all. We've got some clouds around, yes, and some showers both to the west and the south of the city. But as yet, we've been pretty lucky they haven't made it through the Midtown area or as much of the surrounding area within about uh, 30 miles uh, around Midtown Manhattan. National satellite picture shows a large mass as a low-pressure storm center spread some very cold air, strong winds through the midsection of the country. That's going to be moving towards us. So later on, I would say Sunday, we're looking at a possibility of some more showers. Tomorrow morning, a slight possibility of a little sprinkle. But for the most part, tomorrow's going to be a rather mild day with variable cloudiness. And there should be a good bit of sunshine also. Again, warm for this time of year. Five-day forecast makes Jim very happy. It is going to be mild. That's for Michelle. But the moisture is there just for you, Jim. We put that in. There will be some showers on Sunday, but it is going to be pretty nice, actually, over the, for the most part. 
and then we'll have frontal line coming through, clearing out a little bit cooler and lots of sunshine okay. to begin next week. And the rain is dedicated to Jim, right? So. Well, and 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 all the realists in the audience. <laughs> all right, right. Well, it's Thank a 50 you, 50 shot. You can't lose. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, rock star Eric Clapton is turning a personal tragedy into a crusade to save young lives. He's going on television, appealing to parents to prevent accidents such as the one that took the life of his own son. I'm Eric Clapton. I need to talk to parents about how many kids are injured and even killed by falls. Each year in this country, nearly 100,000 kids are hospitalized because of falls. You'll soon be hearing Clapton's heartbreaking message about a subject he knows all too well, the importance of window guards. It was nearly two years ago when Clapton's four-year-old son Connor fell to his death from a 49-story window on East 57th Street. The window was open and had no guards. As a tribute to his son, Clapton wrote and recorded the emotional song, Tears in Heaven. And now Clapton is sharing his personal tragedy through a television public service announcement. His hope, as well as the health department's hope, is that lives will be saved and other parents won't have to suffer as he has. One still wakes up in the middle of the night with a mental picture of this child plummeting to his death from a 45th or 49th floor window. And it's, a, it's an incident that could have been avoided and that, that's the heartbreaking part of it. Here's how parents can help keep their kids safe. There are two simple things you can do. Use guards on windows and safety gates on stairs. It's easy and it could prevent a terrible tragedy. Believe me, I know. In case you don't know it, window guards are required by law in the city of New York, and apartment building owners are required to provide them to all residents having children. Coming up, surviving against all odds. The latest on a baby born while her mother underwent open heart surgery. And a warning about getting in shape and how it can really ruin your health. The city. The music. The radio station. CD 101.9. Cool FM. If you still think a foreign car can give you more for your money, think again. The Ford Taurus has won more major awards than any other car, even Honda Accord. With available anti-lock brakes and dual airbags, you can't get more safety features for the money. Plus, the Taurus has a comfortable interior and plenty of back seat room. And with a standard V6, Taurus has more power and costs less. Now, doesn't that strike? Accord. Now more car for the money isn't such a foreign idea. See your Ford dealer today. Who does your taxes? Actually, my parents did it, managed to mess this up a few years ago. If I did it myself, I'd go to jail, because I know what I'm doing. They're like Greek to me. I feel better taking it to someone who knows exactly what to do. H&R Block. Don't let just anybody do what America's tax team prepares for all year, your taxes. They're up to date on everything. They guarantee satisfaction. And I don't even worry about it anymore. H&R Block, America's tax team. The best just got better. Siemens is hotter than ever with even more great savings on exciting new ways to a beautiful home. Ultimate choice. Select packages now available in optional colors and fabrics. Package Plus. Special packages featuring an area rug or a pair of lamps free. The bedroom advantage. Buy any bedroom and get $100 off the mattress and box spring plus a free bed frame. And for two days only, you can make your purchase with just 10% down and no payments or finance charges till April 93. Last two days. So see Siemens first. Because Siemens is hotter than ever. How to turn a lot of annoying monthly bills into a single annoying monthly bill? Call 1-800-272-LOAN and ask about our low interest loans. Anchor Bank. Big Bank Banking. Small Bank Caring. With our low rates, you'll be glad to know we have plenty of money standing by. Call 1-800-272-LOAN and find out which of our low interest loans is right for you. Anchor Bank. Big Bank Banking. Small Bank Caring. A state prosecutor and three beautiful news anchors. 
the frightening story of the ladies in the news on hard copy. Monday at 7. A happy homecoming for a Bronx mother and her baby tonight. Three weeks ago, Sheila Hall was undergoing open-heart surgery when her daughter decided it was time to come into the world. The baby's doing quite well. Her name is Georgina Mary Hall. She was six weeks premature. She now weighs four and a half pounds. As for her mother, she plans to catch up now and some much-needed rest. I'm sure Georgina will have something to say about I that. Say yes. So, yes, you know. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Well, as the long winter drags on, many of you might be catching the fitness bug. But before you jump into getting in shape, you should know there's a difference between fitness and good health. Dr. Peter Salgo explains in tonight's 11 o'clock Health Watch. You're huffing and puffing and pumping all to get and stay fit. A pretty good idea. But is all this work making you healthy? The difference between fitness and good health is real, and it's important. Dr. Stephen Scheidt is a cardiologist at New York Hospital. He's worried that deciding to become fit and beginning an exercise program may be dangerous to some people's health. It's astonishing but true that substantial numbers of people have major hardening of the arteries without any symptoms whatever. And for these people, a sudden increase in activity can lead to serious heart trouble. The trainers at Manhattan Sports Training Institute do a simple blood pressure test on all new members during exercise. If the diastolic blood pressure goes up uh, more than a certain amount, namely 10 points, that's something to be concerned about. Dr. Scheidt suggests that everyone from age 35 on up thinking about starting to exercise needs at least a blood pressure check, a blood cholesterol test, and a test for the so-called good cholesterol, HDL, as well. For people with strong family histories for heart trouble, a stress test may be in order. But if you're already fit and you think you're safe because you exercise all the time, the experts say again, think again. If you're exercising and you're running and you're in shape, you can eat anything you want. Certainly not. If you have uncontrolled high blood pressure and uncontrolled high blood cholesterol and you have bad family history, you could feel wonderful and still be heading for a heart attack. The moral of the story is that fitness is good. But by itself, it is not good enough. You need to keep track of your health as well. The key, of course, is to be both fit and healthy. And if you can achieve that, you stand a good chance of prolonging your life a great deal. With today's 11 o'clock Health Watch, I'm Dr. Peter Salgo, Channel 2 News. Up next, latest on the Giants' desperate search for a head coach. Also, why everybody at this scorer's table suddenly went bald tonight. Steve Levy will have sports <laughs> next. Guess what? I don't have the keys. I don't have them either. The side door. The gleam of a brass chandelier. Not open. The window. The embrace of a comfortable chair. The hundred other details that make an Ethan Allen house so nice to come home to. If you have a get home. Maybe the garage. Yeah. Right now, there's a sale going on at your Ethan Allen gallery. Once a year, Burlington Coat Factory has its giant warehouse sale and slashes prices on two million coats for men, women, and children. America's greatest coat sale is on now. Okay, Vern, it's time to play Auto Squares. You're tired, irritable, cranky from driving all over town looking for a new car. What do you do? Wrong, Vern. You go to Autoland in Springfield, New Jersey, where you will find every car or truck you would ever want. But will it cost you an arm and a leg? Wrong again, Vern. Autoland has sale prices seven days a week. And, of course, the big savings were behind door number one the whole time. And what do we have for you guys? Wow. No. Uh, oh, look at this. This vast, open rockiness. A screen that's gorgeous. 